Welcome to Talking Giants presented by John Boy Media. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick, and my co-host, Danny King. Danny King is in here today. We got ourselves a short episode. You know, a lot of times we, I, it's a natural reaction to say, hey, we got a lot to get to. We actually don't have a lot to get to, but we do have an interview with Dalen Hayes, um, Edge out of Notre Dame. And guys, I fell in love with this guy at the draft. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about him before before the interview or after the interview. Um but all we got today is giant stories. All we got is giant stories in this interview. So, um, how, who do I send this to? Justin, how are you doing? Hey, Bobby Skinner, Super Bowl this Sunday. Enjoy football one more time. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a brief like, um, panic because I started listening to the weekend because I wanted to get familiar with myself. If this man's going to be on my screen for 20 minutes, I should be somewhat familiar. And then I saw his face in some music videos. I got scared for America. And then I found out it was all fake. Um, Danny King, how are you? Oh, you're muted, bud. I, I, I thought I was unmuted there. Great for way to start the show, Daniel. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm doing great. The weekend's a solid singer. I love the weekend. Uh, I mean, I loved Shakira and JLo last year. So that's going to be the greatest halftime show of my life. But I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, you know who else is doing great? These three people, Max Webster, which I'm pretty sure Max lives in the same city as me. If it's the right Max, it might be a different Max. Let me know, Max. And if you are Max, seriously, I don't want to have to pay for stampage. Just give me your, you know, tell me where we can meet up and I can give you your free stuff. James M. What do you think the M stands for, Justin? Macaroni. Danny, what do you think the M stands for? Uh missile i think it's mongrel um <laughs> and then fritz conrad that's not a real name right like there's no way someone named their kid fritz conrad it's, it's a shame if that is the case because then ramrod. you just totally team ramrod. His life team ramrod team do you guys know team ramrod no i know you don't and it's and i'm not going to be the old man being like you've never seen super troopers um i know the please. song super trooper by abba any relation? Nope, not at all. It's a good movie, though. Uh, yeah, guys. I mean, we, like I said, we only have the giant stories to do today. Uh, oh, who are those? Who are these mongrels, mongloids, or whatever, or whatever I called that guy? Who are these people, Danny? James, not that guy. These are, are some awesome people that went over to patreon.com backslash talking giants. Uh, I was just going to say, you're going to say, oh, they're just some mongrels. <laughs> First time back. I can't disrespect these people. I, I need followers. Please follow me on Twitter now. <laughs> uh, yeah, patreon.com slash talking giants, two dollars a month, free magnet, um, t shirt raffle. Now, I forgot to tell our Patreon members that hey, we're not going to be doing the show on Patreon because it's interview and short, but uh, you know, I'm sure they'll understand. Uh, bad so, guy move, bad guy move. It's all right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's I mean, it's not all right, but it's it's you know, we can get away with that kind of stuff. Talking Giants versus the world is kind of taking off and I love it. Um, I just ordered some new Talking Giants versus the world stickers and our listeners gave me like 10 different designs. So I will be making those as the off season goes and we're like our sticker collection is going to be awesome by the time we die. Sheesh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the stickers are lit. You can't hit like I'm putting my stickers. stickers in my putting stickers in my will. Be like the greasy three sticker that needs to go like that needs to go on my on my to on my um to tombstone. my tombstone and my coffin. I want that sticker on it. I was gonna ask, are you gonna decorate your your tombstone and your coffin like bumper stickers on a car and, and, and like in, in Florida? Fact, yes, I actually want that now. Now I'm thinking about it. I will probably die before you guys. Um, do that seriously. I want you guys at my funeral to put those stickers on my grave. I don't care if my family totally protests it and rejects it. Please put those stickers on my grave, on my tombstone. I don't like how you just, I don't like how you just put this responsibility on us. Yeah, do it. I this is a massive I will, responsibility. I, it, it has to be done. Um, so do it. Please do it. Talking Giants first the world. Um, and just... <laughs> I don't know. I was just thinking of some dumb stuff. I hope you just hope my, my, you know, as the kids would say, my funeral is lit. <laughs> you, you don't want a born one. That's, that is true. You want to go out with a bang. Um, no, it'll be sad. It'll be sad. Um, this has been a cringe start to the show. It'll be I happy. It. The world will be happy, 
but we, you know we'll probably already destroyed the world because we then. are right. against the world yes we are against yeah. the world and, it's, and that's real that's real that's not even a joke that we are really against the world all right let's um do giant stories and, and then we'll kick it to the interview i don't think we can do the music on youtube anymore right we may try it i'll put it at a reduced volume yeah don't stress it don't eh, well we literally have money to lose danny so um you're wrong again uh, <laughs> all right let's let's do it's, what's money it's all about having fun yeah and money i love <laughs> making money makes uh things fun um i mean we talked about it on monday danny on Superman radio didn't we say that my life would be like listen money doesn't buy <laughs> happiness but a full court basketball <laughs> hoop like court or a full court um basketball full basketball court in my house would make me a better person and make my quality of life so much better all right let's do giant stories Leonard Williams was at the arcade with his brother. David Sills was snowmobiling. Xavier McKinney was paintballing. Shane Lemieux was lake fishing in Arizona. Nate Ebner got LASIK eye surgery. Hopefully he can get better in coverage. James Bradbury got cookies from Publix. Sandro Platzgummer was ice skating in Austria. Slow week, slow week. Just I can tell week. when you include Sandro, it's a slow week. Well, I, I try to include. If it's anything interesting, I, I always try to include it, no matter what. The only person I won't include is like, like Madre Harper. It's like I'm, I'm going, I'm skipping over his pretty quick. I'm not really giving though there his a second look. What, Danny, what stuck out to you? Who got the LASIK eye surgery again? What did you say, Nate Ebner? Yeah, Nate Ebner. That's that was interesting. I mean, if, I wonder if it was really a thing going on this season. Uh, Xavier McKinney doing paintball is quite interesting to me. Xavier know? McKinney okay. is, is an active person. Like he likes I to like, do stuff. Like I love it. He he lives like like Xavier McKinney is is very young at heart. He's still young. He's young in real life, but he's young at heart. Where he's like, I like to play video games, go paintballing. Uh, you know. So Xavier McKinney, he's 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 a young at heart type of cat. I would love to get like the whole team together and just do like a paintball tournament. That would just seem like fun. Maybe we could do a Talking Giants paintball tournament. Hey, I'm down for it. My bus driver as a kid wanted to do paintball. And we're like, dude, you're like, he was the weirdest guy ever. Like he was certified weird. Was he, was he a guy that maybe invited him? So after he drove you on the school bus, was he a guy that invited you to the van after school too? Honestly, he probably was, you know, yeah. he, I probably wasn't the most approachable for those type of people, but yeah, he was, he was a weirdo. <laughs> you didn't um, get invited to the van. <laughs> no, no. Um, it's always a good can, thing. You don't want to be invited to it. Can I say something? Leonard Williams is a really good brother. Like he is a ve- he is a good brother. He takes his younger brother and does things with him, spends time with him. And you know, Leonard Williams is a rich man. He made sixteen million dollars this year. He is a rich person who can you know do kind of the stuff. But he spends time with his younger brother, who you know is, is in like high school or middle school. Like he's constantly doing stuff with him. Took him to the arcade with his friends. Like Leonard Williams. I think Leonard Williams like has like really good quality of life. And I think his, like his mindset on life is, is a very good one. We see it with, uh, you know, the way he's spear fishing and, and enjoying the beach he, and just spending time with his brother. Like Leonard Williams is a, is a good person. I think I would defenestrate another person out of a multi-story building for the safety and well being and happiness of Leonard Williams. Does anybody know what the word defenestrate means? Yeah. What's your point of saying that? Danny, do you know what the word defenestrate means? No, no. It, it means uh, throwing someone out of a window. I, I thought that's what it was. Yeah. I was thinking, like, I was like, you're doing something. Well, you're I'm like, really you're impressed with the way you know English, okay? Thank you. <laughs> I, learned, uh, I, I learned that word in my junior year of high school doing membean. So defenestrate. So yes, school I would. does pay off. It does you for that one me moment. For a warm glass of shut the hell up. That one moment, Leonard Williams. I love him. Does not surprise me that he's a great human being. We already knew he was a good human being. We knew he was a fun human being. Now we know he's a great human being because he loves family. I'm really impressed with the way you know English. Okay, you work at a school I don't. That's actually a great line for this. I actually do work at a school. He does. Also, wait, what's this doing? Well, I'm really impressed with the way you know English, okay? You work at a school I don't. Well, what's with the student trash in meteorology? Like, well, what's going on with that kid? I want to take what a look. What's funny? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, it's funny. We uh, news, even though it's not news, Jason Garrett's coming back. That's not news. I don't understand why that's like. To some people, it is. I don't know how it is. Because Jordan Ronan wants people to listen to his podcast. I respect whenever, it. Whenever Jordan wants like downloads on what, what is it? Big, big blue something. Big blue, not big blue banter. We love big blue banter. Um, what whenever Jordan wants show? downloads on his podcast, he always like inserts whatever piece of little news that he includes in that podcast, and he says, "Okay, it's official. Jason Garrett's coming back," even though there was no doubt that that was. Not already the case. Oh. Oh, I don't want too much work. I mean, that is one of my life rules, right? Not to work. Jordan, yeah. He, yeah. I think we're going to try and get him on the show soon, so. Oh, great guy, Jordan. Love your show. Um, <laughs> was was there anything else that uh, I'm trying to – any, anything else on here? You know, snowmobiling is fun. That's Snowmobiling is one of those things that I haven't done that I would really like to do. And my brother, like the, you know, the, I'm just going to send it. Like my brother loved that guy. In fact, he has a send it sticker on the back of his truck. Yeah. Oh, you don't um, mess with him then. <laughs> what I thought, James Bradbury is so boring that he's got these p- cookies from Publix. And he did a story like, man, Publix, these cookies are really good. <laughs> and then he did the next story. And this is not a guy who does a ton of Instagram stories, you know? So it'd be one thing if he was posting like stories every day. He's not. And then the next story is $2.99. And the price is really good. Thank you, Publix. Like he's average, so he's advertising. He's trying to get that public sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's would be a great sponsorship to have. It's a sponsorship I would love. If we were in Florida. I would be if if the show is based out of Florida. I would try and get the public sponsorship. But um, yeah. All right. Do we want to kick it to the interview? Well, well. Hey, Bobby. Speaking of ads. Speaking of ads, support for Talking Giants is brought to you by Manscaped trademark who is the best in men's below the waist grooming manscape offers precision engineer tools for your family jewels they obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience manscape is trusted by over two mil- million men worldwide join the movement for all your below the waist grooming needs guys we all have we all got um our manscape stuff this week um you guys want to sh- kind of like give an example of of how it worked did Ooh. it work well me first yeah, me first let's, let's now let's keep it you know pick on the pg pick on me justin go because yes. i know i i'll let you go first so you don't have, feel the need to like one up me or something all right so well <laughs> you're all gonna have to follow this um everybody knows on this podcast how i love talking about anatomy and my anatomy and what happens with my body well all you jerks this is actually an excuse for me to talk about it because we have to because our company says so boom so suck it the lawnmower 3.0 that is wonderful and manscaped sent us an entire kind of kit and some products that you might like we got some crop mops we got some crop cleansers we got a foot duster if your foot really stinks after a long day when i got dress socks on and i got my shoes on and i take off my shoes to come home and record some podcasts i need some i need to spray a little foot duster on my feet we got some refined cologne if you need to take an italian shower in new jersey a lot of us are you're automatically italian if you're from new jersey you're like 10 percent italian so take those italian showers if you don't actually want to take a shower and then the plow 2.0 is an actually is actually actual razor so there's a kit that they sent us they sent us some of that stuff um but particularly the lawnmower 3.0 i, I use the lawnmower 3.0 dude that that thing is a life changer for me yes compared to the uh, like the trimmer i had before like it, it's it's it it's awesome like i'm i'm not just saying it like it it's awesome like it, it is it is very nice um you know if you join our patreon dm me i can give you i could i can you know we can do that exclusive kind of content but it, it's 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 made things look better. You know the whole story about like a giraffe in the bushes and the giraffe not in the bushes. Which one looks bigger? Same giraffe, but mm. I like that metaphor. True. It's a great man, and that's the reason why people should go buy. And it right honestly, there. if you're not if you're a guy that's not keeping yourself trimmed, you you like get your life together. Seriously, like see, like get your get your life together. This isn't the '60s anymore. Yeah, I mean it's it's a fantastic product. Women too. You? Look at that. Justin, say something. There's a light. Especially women, to be honest. There's a light and it's waterproof. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know when you'll be in a situation. It's waterproof? Yes, it's waterproof. Is it really? Yeah. Well, now that's good to know because I don't have to sit in an empty shower um, (laughs) doing it like I was doing this week. uh, What what an image. (laughs) 
what not it is. sitting, but like st- standing in an empty. But don't shower. worry, it, it 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 what? It's skin safe. That's what they say. It is. It's, it is. Uh, it is skin safe. They, yeah. they give you um. They give you some like, m- you know, lotion moisturizer if it's like you know itchy, irritating afterwards. I have barely even needed to use it because that's it, it gave a very good natural shave. So, um, Bobby, why don't you tell us about a code that our listeners can use? to support us and also get their own manscaped items. Yeah, it's good. Um, I'm actually looking at page two of the ad. I didn't see that. Get 20% off free shipping with the code giant at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code giants. Okay, cool stuff. Cool stuff. All right. We have an interview with Notre Dame edge, Dalen Hayes. Um, he had a big week at the senior bowl and I was listening to um first draft with, with uh, McShay and Kuiper and McShay's like, he moved up into my second round. I, I really do think this guy's going to be a New York giant. I think he is the perfect fit. Um, he is, he's an outside linebacker who plays the run really well, rushes the passer really well. And he plays like he can drop back in coverage. They had him working on tight ends playing, you know, doing one-on-ones with tight ends in their route. So, dude, and he's just, like he's a stellar dude, man. He if this guy's not a New York Giant, I'll honestly be shocked. So um let's kick it to Thalen Hayes. All right, we now welcome on to the program. He's part of this draft class. He was at the senior bowl, was keeping a keeping an eye on him, working with the defensive ends, even a little bit of linebacker too, out of Notre Dame, a golden domer. Thalen Hayes, what's going on, my man? How you doing? What's going on, guys? Um yeah, man. Uh, like you said, bro, I did a little bit of everything down there. You know, I had always um, – people had always assumed I was, a, like, you know what I'm saying, that I could do it, like the versatility aspect, but I really wanted to do it and compete against the, the best competition in the country. So, you know, it was a, it was an awesome opportunity. I had a great time. It was a great week. So, yeah, appreciate you guys having me on the show. Of course, man. I, I want to ask you the start. So, you know, I was doing a little bit of research, and, like, you know, you were setting up, like, a Juneteenth event. And then, you know, for a little behind the scenes – Getting in players' interviews, it's usually a hassle. It's like, all right, let's get it at the right time, like bugging, bugging. You were showing initiative, texting me. What makes you tick, man? Because I, I don't see many people that seem to show that initiative that you have. Is that something that, you know, you started at a young age or what? I guess, man. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm just excited, bro. Like, I mean, this is you, – you're on the you're on the cusp of accomplishing, like, a dream that I've had since I was, like – I don't know, man, since I was seven – seven years old, man, I was, I was really excited, man. Like just the opportunity, um, excited for the opportunity, excited to go compete. Um, and then like community, man, like, I mean, aside from like, you know, when I'm away from football, like community, community and community service and involvement is, is, um, uh, my, probably my second biggest passion. So, you know, just doing those things, getting involved, uh, finding different ways to kind of help people and, and just cause a fa- uh, effective change, like in your immediate community. Um, those are very important to me. So, um, uh, yeah, man, I don't have no complaints. I'm just having fun. Yeah, I, I, I'm just saying, like, you know, uh, we, we we throw out the word weirdo uh, a little too often. We always say, if you're not weird, you're weird. But I was like, man, this is, this is weird that a, a player is showing initiative. Like, because usually, even if we know the guy, it's like, all right, we got to get him at the right time and work around stuff where you were showing initiative. So that was, so that was, that was, that was refreshing for us where it's like, we don't have to change our <laughs> schedule 12 times to set up an interview. Yeah. So I'm sure at Notre Dame, they have you doing elevator pitches for jobs all the time. You know, Notre, Notre Dame's a school, I'm sure, that kicked your ass academically. So let's say a casual football fan, they're not familiar with Dalen Hayes. Give us kind of like your elevator pitch. You know, who are you? What are you about? Who are you kind of as a football player? How would you describe yourself to maybe a casual football fan that doesn't maybe know who you are? Um. Okay, so uh, yeah, like I said, like Notre Dame. Um, Dalen Hayes from the University of Notre Dame, number nine. I was a captain this year. Um, you know, who am I as a player? Really, man, I really don't feel like I have any, any, like one specific trait because I feel like I, I feel like is like versatility, um, in my pass rush, dropping in the coverage, playing off the ball, uh, setting the edge, um, even as a pass rusher specifically, like, you know, I'm, I can use, I, I have like really good speed off the edge, you know what I'm saying? Like, but that really opens up a lot of my power. Um, but you know, like really, man, it's, I don't really know what I don't really have one specific title. I would just say like I'm, I'm I can do a lot of different things, and I feel like there's no real limit to what I can do on the field. Um, you know, like I play probably played at about two fifty eight to two sixty throughout this year, and yeah, man, like you know, a lot of people what people get caught up on is like my production at Notre Dame, my production number specifically. 
Um, and you know, like if it, like at if you really go back and look at and understand like what our defense was asking me to do, like there's a lot of different. I'm doing a lot of different, a lot of different things. You know, I'm playing coverage on the running back. Um, I'm spying the quarterback. I'm dropping in the coverage. Um, there, we, we rally a ton. Like there are times where we would only get five plays in a row and then a whole new set of defensive linemen would come in. And, you know, that kind of throws off your rhythm, you know, especially when you have the number one uh, time of possession offense across from you on the other side, you know? Uh, so there were times, man, where our starters were probably, you know, I started in defensive line, we're only getting 20 to 30 reps a game uh, just because of that constant rotation. But um, and then, you know, on top of that, like I said, man, just I, I've just been given a lot of tasks and roles throughout my throughout the defense just because, you know, like that was what was asked of me. And I, I have no problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, when you look at my production numbers, I don't I don't feel like my numbers tell the whole story. So that's why this week, this past week was so important for me uh, just to come down and just be able to rush against the top guys. And, you know, like this was a week where I came down like it wasn't like a good week, like it was a dominant week, like I dominated dudes off the edge and you know, like I felt like I was able to show that I can be a dominant pass rusher. And, you know, like my numbers may not reflect that in college, but, you know, that's just a matter of what was asked of me at Notre Dame. Like that's not really a, a reflection of my ability. Um, so, you know, like, you know, I, I, that was just the point I really wanted to prove. When we when we talked a couple of weeks ago, I was like, okay, let me, you know, go watch this film and see what he's about. Like you said, versatility pops off the screen. And then, you know, down there at the senior bowl, there was a lot of guys where, you know, in the one-on-one pass rush, they'd kill, but in the run game, they would stink. Where you seem to be doing it all, and then they, you know, you you worked with them that day. That being said, the Giants in their defense, they preach versatility, and it's real. Like coming into this year, we were like, oh, everyone says versatility, and then you know, it's it's basically their defense is a one-trick pony. They really are versatile, and especially on the outside linebacker spot, where you know there was a player who was maybe the best pass rusher, but he didn't play because he really had no coverage skills. So. One, did you meet with the Giants? And two, you realize you will get drafted by the Giants because of that versatility, right? <laughs> yeah, I met with the Giants. It was actually a pretty – it was a really good interview, uh, especially because they're uh, – I think Chad Clunder, I, I don't know exactly what his title is, but he used to be the um, uh, the director of player personnel at Notre Dame. So as soon as I saw him, I was like, okay. what's up? So it was just like, you know, big family. Um, and we had, a, we had a great talk, man. But at the end, one of their, one of their scouts, man, he was just like, you know – he, he was really trying to like challenge me. He was like, you know, Dalen, he's like, I'm watching you today. And he's like, you know, I see like your size, your speed, blah, blah, blah. There's not really, you know, like, I just feel like you, you have all the tools to be a great player. So he was like, but he was like, I feel like you leave. I, he was like, I feel like you leave plays on the field. He was like, you know, that's just my opinion. He was like, you know, I, I just feel like you can be more dominant out there on the field. And I was like, all right, say less. So the next two days I was really out there trying to prove a point, bro. Cause I want, <laughs> If, if you have any doubt about my ability or my consistency with my ability, like, then I want to, I want to show that. Cause like, you know what I'm saying? I'm a competitor. That's just who I am. So he gave me a little bit of a chip, uh, even more of an added chip that I, than I already had uh, coming down there. So, you know, I hope, I hope, I hope he, he was able to like, you know, watch the film and be like, all right, <laughs> I see. I, I see what's I, up. I like it. Like I said, man, like, Every, every new coaching staff, like, oh, we want versatile guys. Like, okay, sounds good. You know, never, never happens. And yeah. with Graham, I don't know if you got to meet with him or just, you know, the scouts or, or, or whoever, but I mean, they really do preach versatility. So seems like you might be a perfect fit. There's also a guy who's versatile. I mean, he's literally played safety corner, all those spots. Julian Love on the Giants. <laughs> were, you, were you friends with him or you got any inside scoop, inside stories on him? Yeah, man. Jay Love, man. That's my boy. He was uh, he was a part of the Savage 16, uh, the 2016 uh, recruiting cycle. So we all came in together. He's a part of our group, um, the Sab 16 group, man. We're, we're super tight. We were part of that group, man. Really, that class was, you know, um, a pivotal class for the university because that we came into that year, our freshman year, four and eight. And over the next four to five years, we haven't lost eight games total. We lost seven. So, like, you know, that, that group was uh, pivotal as far as, like, transitioning the culture. Um, transitioning the culture into a winning culture. And we, we you know, uh, the leadership that we had, Jay Love was a great leader for us. Um, you know, like we were tight, we were a tight bonded group. Um, so it's been awesome to see, you know what I'm saying? Like most of the guys moved on last year. So we've been seeing them on TV and stuff, but it's dope, man. Jay Love is a great dude. Inside scoop on Jay Love. <laughs> Jay Love is a huge napper, napper, sleeper. Like Jay Love <laughs> is the type of dude to like wake up five minutes. Like he, ha he has to, he's going to squeeze as much sleep as he can get right before he has to be anyway. Like, that's just, that's the type of dude he is, man. He just be, 
knocked all the time for no reason. So we used to clown him all the time about that. But is he like fall asleep in random places or like playing it out? Because I've had the fr- I've had friends where it's like everywhere we go, it's like there's Jordan asleep again. Uh, no, I mean I don't know. I mean I just know before games on the bus ride to the stadium, even if it was like a ten minute drive, he's back there and knocked out. Uh, I know in, in between classes, he's always going back to his dorm to get a quick nap in. Like he's just. He's always finding extra finding extra ways to find get some sleep and get rested, man. So that's funny. Yeah. I think we got something set up for him in like a month or so. So that'll we'll we'll have to we'll have to throw that one at him. Well, that's sure. why that's why he looks so pretty because he gets all the beauty sleep. He fits. He in gets the beauty sleep, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, something that I just I get an impression when I'm just scrolling around your your social media feeds and whatnot. I get the impression for your love of program and for your love of Notre Dame. You talked about, you know, the crew in 2016, you all, you, you guys are attached and I'm sure that's going to be something that you're going to tell your grandkids one day. Like, Oh yeah. You know, we, we turned around, we went four and eight and then the next couple of years we lost seven games uh, total. So I'm um, um, that it's really cool about your pride of program, but you missed some time in 2019. Yeah. So how important was it for you to come back and play this season to try and leave a mark both on the program with Notre yeah. Dame, but also prove like yourself, leave a mark like with yourself on the NCAA and say, here I am, you know, to try and move on to the NFL and see if you can do that. Yeah, man, that was huge. It was actually, man, it was kind of like a sigh of relief when I got hurt because leave get going into that year. Um, I was kind of upset. I was just like, you know, I felt like I could have let, I felt like I had more to give, you know, and I remember telling um, our coaches and I remember, um, telling some people around the program, not not even our football program, like in our athletic department, like I had, I had done like Rosenthal, I had done uh, Rosenthal Leadership Academy. Um, I had done, you know, a lot of community service. So I had a lot of people around me. Um, and I remember talking to them and I was like, man, I felt like I just had more in the tank. I had, there was something on my heart. God put something on my heart that I, that I was like, that I wasn't finished. And when I got hurt, that was the moment where it all clicked, where I was like, okay, you put this on my heart. So this is something that, I need to, I'm back here one more year for a reason. Like there's something that, you know, I don't know what it is yet. And I'm going to just follow your lead. Like you just continue to guide my steps, God. But like, yeah, man, it was, it was, it was insane. So the way that this year played out. I mean, working with kids when I got hurt, I actually had a lot more time. So I started teaching a class um, at an elementary school um, just about conflict resolution. And then we started teaching um, Rosenthal, the Rosenthal Leadership Academy program ended up doing a basketball um, basketball camp for kids, a four week basketball camp for kids at a uh, Mizo elementary where we were kind of teaching them leadership values through the game of basketball. Um, obviously the black lives matter stuff that we were able to do and get accomplished um, on campus. Um, like all the, uh, it was so, I mean that, I mean, upon like a ton of different other things, like, you know, able to get my hand in on the, uh, around school, being able to get involved with, um, uh, our mental health, our mental health, uh, rally through the University of Notre Dame. Like that was for our athletes, athletes, mental health. And being, just being involved, man, having my hands in a lot of different things on campus and like really just making sure that I was trying to push the, push the envelope and push, push, the, uh, push the bar forward, really just kind of leaving Notre Dame better than I found it. You know, that was always something that guy had put on my heart was to try and leave things better than I found it. And, um, you know, like that, that 2019 year before I got hurt, I really had felt like there was more in the tank that I had. So when I got hurt, man, it was really, it was really a moment of clarity, really. And uh, I was excited to come back, um, obviously to play, you know, and then we had a great season. Uh, one of the most memorable wins in, in Notre Dame Stadium this year. Um, yeah, man, it, it was it was really it was really cool to kind of see everything come full circle this year, man. It was really it was kind of like poetic in a way. Yeah, that's cool, man. You mentioned, you know, a, a historic when you guys beat Clemson and, and then lost. But. So in this, how I'm not a Notre Dame fan, but I, I get annoyed for Notre Dame fans because you guys lose to Alabama and Alabama wins pretty good. And then everyone says, oh, Al- Notre Dame's a fraud. Notre Dame's a fraud. But then you look, Alabama destroys everybody. So does that ever get frustrating? It's like, why do y'all like point at us for losing to Alabama when everyone else gets smoked by Bama too? Yeah, I mean, you know, you got even the, even the year that um, – that we lost to Clemson in 2018, like uh, Bama got blew out by Clemson. Yeah, they smoked Bama too. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's tough because there's that perception. I think the perception comes from that that 2012 game, the BCS game, way back when, and then that kind of like carried, people kind of had that sour taste in their mouth and it just kind of carries year to year. But yeah, man, uh, 
like like I said, man, Bama, I mean, this year Bama was in a league of their own. Um, I think we held them to the lowest point scores that they had, they had you know, had it in the game. Um, and then the 2018 year when we lost to Clemson, I mean, Bama got blew out by Clemson too. So, I mean, it's tough because you always want to win those games. But, I mean, hey, like, I don't, I, it is what it is, bro. Right. Now, now see- Dalen, well, Go Bobby, I'm going to come in. Uh, Dalen, you were talking a lot about, like, some of the off-the-field stuff that you were doing throughout this year. And, honestly, like, that impresses me because, you know, coming from – I just graduated college myself. So, knowing what you're able to do and not able to do on a college campus during COVID um, – and the, you know, the access to people and the access to the community, it is somewhat limited. So to hear all of those things that you did is actually really, really cool, but we don't really get the chance to interview a lot of college football players. So kind of maybe describe for us some of the challenges that was involved with maybe in the locker room, on the field stuff, um, in the, on the practice field, in the film room, whatever that can, that comes with, you know, playing football, playing NCAA division one football through COVID. Um, yeah. I mean, wh- <laughs> The toughest, I mean, it's tough on everyone, man. I mean, I think it's even tough for a professional athlete, let alone college athletes who are, yep. you know, incoming freshmen, um, you know, young guys, sophomores. I mean, you got to realize that they, I mean, they're coming in for the total college experience and they're kind of robbed of that uh, this year, especially with COVID, because, you know, this isn't a year where, you know, after a big game, after we beat Clemson, where you can go out to a party and, you know what I'm saying? Like in the next morning, you might bring COVID back with you. This isn't a time where you can come into a meeting room and, you know, just being there strictly just focused on football, you have to be work, conscious about your mask, conscious about sanitizing, um, keeping your distance from other players. Like, you know, the locker room was divided. Half of our locker room was in the game day locker room. Half of our locker room was back at the goo. Um, you like you talk about waking up at 730 on top of, you know what I'm saying? Like in season, you got to sleep in a little bit more till about 830, 9 o'clock. Get your get your get ready for um, class because spring, everything is like at 5, 6 a.m. Uh, but you know when you start bringing in these COVID testing you know that's that's a 7 a.m wake up call so you know there's a lot of different things man that really went into you know having a successful season and then we had an out we even had an outbreak so you know being able to bounce back from that um guys just have to be super conscious man super conscious and you know that's that's part of a freshman's development right them being working to a point where they're you know what I'm saying like less less about the seniors and the juniors who have kind of gotten their feet up under them they're, the freshmen are taking on, you know, college, uh, edu- like education-wise, because Notre Dame is not not an easy school to, you know what I'm saying, to attend. Um, they're getting their football feet, learning the playbook, blah, 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 trying to get their feet underneath them. And then on top of that, you're given a whole a- extra layer of um, the COVID restrictions and regulations that they had that, that were set in place this year. So they were given, you know, they were given a lot, man. And, you know, a, our leadership really had to pull those guys along because, you know, at, at the end of the day, this year, you're so connected because your decisions in, uh, affect everyone. You know, you go you go out to a party, you go out to a bar, you go do this, and then you bring back uh, um, the co- like COVID to a senior, a senior captain, a senior SWAT team leader, whatever. And then that's that's their livelihood, you know? Yeah. And, and since that's, you know, that that's our program not being able to play because of one guy's decision. So nobody wanted to be that guy. Um, our care factor, man, our give a shit factor was was through the roof, like more that uh, more than years past. Um, we were a tightly knit group, man, and we played like it. We played complimentary um, because of our our rapport off the field and our commitment uh, to what we wanted to do. And, and yeah, it was a it was a great team, man. It was a great. Oh, this is probably one of my favorite teams that I've ever been a part of. So you mentioned C- SWAT team member. What's that uh, SWAT team? So uh, we have six. No. We have six captains that are voted by players, but we have 10 SWAT team leaders. So in the beginning of the spring, um, your, our team is broken up into 10 different teams. Um, so there are 10 guys who have all SWAT team. I had one, Ian had one, Ade, Rob, Liam, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and those are chosen by the coaches. Um, and you're given 10 guys and you all compete against each other. So that's based on community service work, academics, uh, football strength, speed, um, like whatever, like all these different variables that go into points that contribute to the team. And then like, if you're late for class, um, you miss class, miss the assignment, blah, blah, blah. And you miss it, your locker's dirty, you lose points. So there's a, our team is broken up into 10 different subsections and we have 10 different leaders for each of their teams. And we do a draft at the beginning of the spring. Um, and then amongst, uh, after that, before camp, you're uh, before, not at the end of camp, 
uh, your teammates vote our actual captains. So some years we'll have four captains, some years we have eight. This year I think we had six. Um, so yeah, that's that's a that's a SWAT team. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, we'll finish off with you know the bland question you probably heard a ton this week. Who was okay. the best matchup from Senior Bowl week that you went up against? Uh, I like the kid from North Dakota State. I don't know his name. Raidens, but... Dylan Raidens. I, I I saw you guys going up against each other day one, man. That looked like a fun matchup. Yeah, man. We had some real good battles, man. I thought he was a real I thought he was I was really impressed with him, man. Like uh we were we were able to we went back and forth, got a couple wins on him, he got a cut he got a win on me in uh one on one. So he's a good he's a good player, man. Like real good player. So good. uh he was probably my probably the the guy I felt like was the best there. That's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Anything like you learned from from that? I guess we'll finish on this. Anything like you learned? Because I mean, Notre Dame, you're playing with and against great players. But was there anything you got from that experience that's like, man, I, I wasn't expecting that? Um, that I learned about myself, or that I learned about the experience. Like, what do you mean? Just like playing, like not playing against an NFL player on the other side, but it's like okay, there's 11 NFL players on the other side of me, you yeah. know, where it's like, obviously they're not, you know, they're not all going to be starters next year, but majority of those guys are going to be NFL guys. My thing was that, you know, um, I remember talking to our guys at Notre Dame and we felt like our practices at Notre Dame were actually harder than the uh, senior bowl because okay. we have some, I felt like, you know, we go against some of the best players in practice, like, you know, best tackles in the country. I mean, you saw what type of week Rob was able to have. Uh, you saw what type of week Ade was able to have. If Liam was down, he would have had a great week. Um, and then, like, the week that I was able to have, and Aaron and Banks was able to have, like, we have some 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 dudes on our team. And I remember uh, not just not being worried about that, you know, not being worried about going into the senior bowl, like, worried about competition because I feel like we go against the best guys every day in practice. Um, and we had some great battles, man. So um, I was you know, what I learned, I guess, uh, is that Notre Dame, man, is that we have some guys on our team. Um, and, and, and that we, we play at a high level and we have um, some high level players, man. So like, I, I, I was excited uh, for the opportunity, but I, I knew I had, I had confidence because of, you know, the work that we've been getting all week or all week, all year um, right. against, you. So, you know, I just felt extremely prepared because uh, I feel like we have some of the best players in the country. Man, so, well, good stuff, man. Good week of practice. Uh, really looking forward to see how this draft process works out for you. Dalen Hayes and Notre Dame. Thanks, my man. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys having me. Appreciate you. All right, bro. Peace. All right. Thanks again, Dalen Hayes, for coming on the show. Go check him out. Go watch his film. I'll do a film breakdown of him next week. Um, guys, you know, we try to stick to the Giants on this show, but I figured it's the Super Bowl. Let's do a little uh, Super Bowl preview. And we're going to kick it to Weatherman Dan. Danny, I, I sprung this on you last second, so you don't have the background. Do you have an old background that you could pull up? Uh, I might have an old background I could pull up. Let me see. If you just want from the Middle East, if you just want to keep talking, you know what? Let's go back to good old reliable. Let's bring. Let's change it up for the night. Bring back the good old <laughs> Middle East background. Uh, because that's where Tampa Bay is in the Middle East. That's if you didn't know, it's now in, you know. It's really. I mean, Florida kind of is the Middle East at times. The Middle West of Florida. But, I mean, Florida is like the Middle East. How about that? That is there's true. A lot of sand too. There is a lot. Well, yeah, that Florida's on the Gulf. So, like, there's a Gulf somewhere around here. But why are we getting into the geography of the Middle East? It's going to be 67 degrees at the Super Bowl. I read there might be some rain, so that'd be a bummer to sit in. That'd be a bummer to sit in. And uh, yeah, oh, 10 mile an hour winds northwest. So the return of the Miami again, which I mean, not Miami, uh, the return of the Florida again, I didn't think to be going to Florida back to back years. Well, Tampa's getting screwed because they don't get the true Super Bowl experience, but if you're going, it's not, it might not be the best of weather. All right. So for the playoffs, I am six and six. Danny and the listeners are seven, five and Justin's nine and three. So Justin wins the playoffs. Um, even though like no one really cares about the playoffs, to be honest, um, our records in the playoffs, and it's more of us trying to be different. And we do it on Simple Man Radio. So, like, is it official? Which I guess we have to do this again on Simple Man Radio tomorrow. So, we'll, we'll you know, it's a tradition to call Justin on Fridays. Um, guys, I think the Bucks are going to win this. I really do. I think this this is all setting up for a Bucks victory. You got Jay. I think with the both tackles out. Now, you have Mike Rimmers and, like, Dave Blivey or for whatever the guy's other tackle's name is. 
Jason Pierre-Paul, Shaq Barrett. I think the Bucks, a team that is aggressive and blitz heavy, which can leave them exposed, is not going to blitz a ton. They're going to blitz, no. but they're going to pick and choose their battles. It's going to be mostly a four-man rush because they're going to trust those two guys. I think those two guys are going to have a game against those two tackles, and Mike Rimmers is going to relive his his Super Bowl um, nightmare against the Broncos. Um, you got – okay, so now they're going to hit you with crossers. Well, guess what? You have Devin White, Levante David, two guys who can cover those over the middle. Now, I get you have some bad matchups on the outside for the Bucks, but I think they're going to be able to work through that. And then on the other side of the ball, I think the Chiefs defense is pretty it's decent. I think the Bucs are going to score points in this game. I, I, no matter what the Bucs defense do, does, I think the Bucs are going to score 30 points. Um, and I, I think I, – I, I don't think it's a hot take at all. I really do think the Bucs are going to win this game. I mean, this is – probably the toughest defense the Chiefs will have played in the playoffs by a mile. And like you said, the, the Bucks are solid everywhere. It's it's a fantastic matchup, but I the issue is, though, they're, the Bucks are playing Patrick Mahomes. The guy can make anything work. And by anything, I mean anything. He, he can underhand it. He can freaking chuck it deep. He's so funny, so good to watch. Who can stop Patrick Mahomes? I don't know. I don't know. I just think the Bucks will take a lead and they won't blow it like other teams have versus the Chiefs. Other Chiefs, other teams have taken leads versus the Chiefs and they weren't able to hold it. I think the Bucks are a team that's going to be able to hold it, uh, and I think Patrick Mahomes will throw an interception in this game. I don't know because it's not like you know if the Bucks get ahead, let's say it's not going to be because the Chiefs aren't coming out and being aggressive. The Chiefs are going to throw the ball seventy percent of the time from quarters one through four and I you know, unless they're up by you know two three touchdowns that's not going to change so Todd Bowles and the Tampa Bay Bucks have the fifth highest blitz rate in the National Football League I believe they are also the defense that has allowed the fourth least amount of explosive plays of 15 yards or more explosive pass plays so how are they ultimately going to mesh the two whether they want to be aggressive, which Bobby, I agree with you. I don't think the approach to playing Patrick Mahomes is blitzing because then what happens when he blitzes, he runs, he breaks containment and Patrick Mahomes outside the pocket behind the line of scrimmage when he still has the ball in his hands about to throw it, I think is way more dangerous than Patrick Mahomes inside the pocket. Cause then you're talking about Kelsey breaking, you know, Kelsey uh, improvising uh, Tyree kill improvising all these wide receivers, all those skill position players that they have, they're improvising and they have such a good connection with Mahomes. So if they do blitz, I think that's actually going to help Patrick Mahomes because he will be forced to run around. He's had two weeks to heal from whatever ankle injury or injuries that he sustained. Um, I'm really split and torn on this game. I went on air uh, during a podcast that I did, I think two different times the last couple of weeks. And I said, chiefs, even though I I'm kind of rooting for Brady, I kind of want Brady to kind of stick at the bill. And it always looks better for the giants. When Brady wins more, it always looks better on Eli's resume, but I think I'm going chiefs. I think Mahomes is too good. I'm, I'm kind of siding with Danny here. So Danny, you're going chiefs, right? I am going cheese because you also have to go back and look at the first game they played this year. They put up 17 points in the first quarter. Patrick had three touchdowns, 462 yards. It was just a murder. And then the Bucs obviously were able to get back into it. Three point game, 24 10 in the last three quarters. The Bucs learned something. Don't let them blitz you like that crazy. Listeners are going Chiefs too. The one thing that's I'm torn about, let's, we're bringing this back to the Giants. Do you root for Jason or do you root for Spags? I would be all yeah. in on rooting for JPP and the Bucks if I didn't have friends who are Bucks fans that I don't want them to feel that joy of a Super Bowl. <laughs> so I, I think I might, I think I might be rooting for Chief. I, I'm not gonna. I, honestly, it, it's not gonna bother me either way. But I think long term, I would probably be happier if the Chiefs won, just so my Bucks friends couldn't feel any happiness, and I don't want them to have that. They already had the Lightning, so they, they don't. They, they, ah. they, my, my, none of my <laughs> friends are trash talking to me about the lightning. Let's just say that. It, it's, it, yeah, I just, I just, we just need a good game. As long as it's not like, a, what was it, Rams Patriots from 2019, the snooze fest. Yeah, I just, didn't this hate is that game. People were mad at that game. It was, it was a one score game the entire game. I get no, it wasn't but exciting, but I it, just, was, it was intense. Yeah, no, it, it was intense, but like for the Super Bowl, I want like some excitement. Yeah, I, I'm, with, I'm with Danny because offense is exciting. Like, let's not 
you know, put it frank in any other way. The, the Super Bowl is a cultural event. And unless you're a grind it out film kind of guy, uh, the Super Bowl between the Rams and the Pats uh, was not an enjoyable event. It was not an enjoyable cultural event. Wait, was it, who enjo- cares about culture? But it, We're this, against the world, don't you remember? This, but that's what the Super Bowl is. The Super Bowl is not just a game. And you can honestly, it's different than the World Series. It's different. I mean, maybe the finals doesn't even have the feel because there's just so many of them. You're not getting together with your pals and you're watching every game of the finals. You know, maybe one, maybe, maybe, maybe one of them. But the Super Bowl, you're getting together with your buddies. You're getting together with your friends. And it is an event. It is an, a cultural event that it is so much more than the actual game itself. You're not on the edge of your seat breaking down, like, what's happening in this game. What is, you know, what coverage is Patrick Mahomes reading in the Super Bowl? No, because you got you got wings in your hands. You got a beer. You got a beer in the other hand. And you're waiting for the halftime show. Everything, like, it's an event. See, I can't do the event. Like, I have always, like – the last few years, the Super Bowl has just been me watching with my brother. And every time I have been a part of Super Bowl party, I end up leaving at halftime because, like, you guys aren't watching a game. You guys won't shut up. I'm listening to someone who doesn't watch football try and talk to me about, like, what is he doing? And I, it's honestly, I lose my mind. So almost every Super Bowl party I've been to, I've left at halftime. There's been Super Bowl parties at my house, and I would go to somebody else's house to watch the Super Bowl. Like the Ravens Super Bowl against the 49ers. Um, there was like 30 people at my house and I went and watched it at somebody else's house. Just me and them. Well, that's a you problem. You just up and left your own house. Well, no, I planned it. I was like, I'm not staying here for this. Like I want to watch the Super Bowl. I don't want it to. So was it forced upon you to host that party? No, I mean, it was like, you know, I had housemates, so it's not oh, like, okay. it's not like it was my, like was, I had roommates and, and they threw a party. Um, and, um, my senior high school, which was Saints Colts, it was the first time I've been like, they were playing music. They were playing music. And I was like, is this a joke? Like, is it is this seriously a joke right now? And I went home. I just went home in halftime and watched the end. The end. Uh, I, I cannot do Super Bowl parties. And food wise, I am a thin crust pizza because it's, it's pizza, but it's light. It won't make you want to fall asleep. And and that's it, really. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like maybe the some wing. chips and salsa. Oh, you, well, you gotta have chips and salsa. Oh, that'd you get, be, you're getting crazy now, Bobby. So. That'd, that'd, be, yeah, that'd be illegal now. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have the wings. I can't say alcohol because I'm not of the age, but uh, you, you got burgers, you got your, you got, and then you go all out in desserts. I, I, I'm, I, I don't usually get pizza for the Super Bowl parties because the pizza, I, I, that, that just doesn't feel Super Bowl to me. Wings, burgers, that's Super Bowl to me. You guys disgust me. I can't. Your jersey. You got to have pizza. Like here's the, here's what I'll give you. I like the commercials. I like to watch the commercials. I actually do. See, that, has been, the, that, been that, been thing, that has been the thing that has gotten worse as the years have gone on. They have that gotten is true. worse. They have gone. And, and plus, there's going to be no good ones this year. Like Budweiser doesn't have one. They're all, uh, all right. Ro- I need to say something. They're probably going to all be like, in has- these trying times. They're probably all going to be super yeah, lame I, and like. So yep. like, like we're just trying to help. It's like shut up and make me laugh. Dance. I am very dance I am, for me. I am very sympathetic and now empathetic. I just had recently a a, lo- a loved one who we just lost to COVID. So I'm I was sympathetic and empathetic to COVID, right? But, <laughs> but I don't want to be reminded. I don't want to like correct. Correct. Like we don't need to be reminded like that we're living in unprecedented times. Like, we know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It's like, Do I wanna... really don't give a crap about what Geico... Like, actually, no, Geico stays stick true to their roots. They don't, yeah. just, you know, try no. and, like... Okay, I don't need to know what CarMax thinks of this. Like, I, I don't need your... I don't need your... Your support, CarMax. Robin Hood has a commercial on during the Super Bowl. So that's, that, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. Stay they should really just, lean uh... into it, though. Does Dave Portnoy have a commercial? No, this was before the whole situation with Robin Hood happened. They purchased this back in December. I Do you want, guys have I, Robin Hood? No. I no. did it for like a couple months, a couple years ago. I am, You got to monitor Doge, though. Doge to the moon. What I want, I want Robin Hood to have a commercial and then Dave Portnoy to come on afterwards and just, Bobby, we're at the end of the show. I'm going to say something. Dave Portnoy to come on and say, fuck you, Robin Hood. <laughs> 
I, I want to. I'm gonna fight Dave Portnoy. Bully. He didn't bully. He didn't bully Steve Cohen off Twitter. That was his. That's what I want. That that was his cronies doing it for him. But Dave Portnoy, when he said he lost 700 grand because of, of his meme stock, I laughed. I he laughed. Lost audibly. 700 thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um. I, I'm worried. Don't listen I, to financial advice on this show. Don't, don't listen to financial advice to people who aren't the brightest I could give people good fun. Actually, no, I can't. All right. Um, that's the show. Oh, what's that? Anything interesting? Nope, it's just a stupid Yahoo email. Appreciate you guys. We'll be back on Tuesday. Um, we're going to have a voicemail mailbag soon. Like it's, it's, it's time. It's time. We haven't done one in a while, so we'll be doing that soon. Oh, Appreciate- wait, wait. I got a late edition of the Giants story. Do it. Saquon Barkley is now streaming. He's, that's lame. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't want to put that on there. It's Saquon Barkley, like he's the star of the show. Thanks for ruining the ending, Danny. We appreciate you guys, for except for Danny. Until then, let's go, Big Blue.